Hey guys, this is Salamander Anagram with ReactorTutorials.com and this month I'm going over some of my favorite ensembles from the Reactor user library. Today I'll be checking out Serenade by Chet Singer, which is a physical modeling synthesizer for string instruments. If you like this tutorial, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. We come out with a new Reactor tutorial every week. Alright, so the first thing you might notice about Serenade is that if you try to just play a note, you're not going to get any sound out of it. So right here you can um, see the MIDI activity monitor, and as I'm pressing notes, we're getting no sound out. And the reason for that is in Serenade, the MIDI notes are basically controlling um, the left hand of the player, so the hand that's pressing fingers down on the fretboard. And the right hand, with the bow scraping across the string, is controlled by this big fader in the center here. So in order to get sound, we need to move this fader while we're playing a MIDI note. Okay, so I really like this design because it adds a certain level of expression that is often missing from digital models of acoustic instruments. And it also can do a very good job of emulating some of the perceived flaws of those instruments. Okay, so in the upper right hand corner here you can choose which string instrument to emulate. And these all have a fairly distinct character all of their own. And in the bottom left hand corner here we have all of the parameters that are going to affect how the bow model is working. And I find that these are kind of the most important for getting the sound that you really want and dialing it in. So by increasing the force for example we're going to add kind of a scratchier element to our sound. And also in this section, um, we can get a pizzicato sound. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. I've only ever seen this word written before. But basically, this is just a way to play these um, strings plucked instead of with a bow. And if we do that, we actually don't need to use the gesture fader. Okay, so next let's talk about some ways to control the gesture fader in the center um, without using the mouse. So the first and most obvious way is you can simply right click on it and select the MIDI and OSC learn option. And then you can move any knob or fader on your MIDI controller and it will automatically map that knob to control the gesture fader. So I found that my hands were not that great at creating the kind of smooth transitions up and down that I would like to get out of this fader here, so I decided to automate it in Ableton, which I thought would be an easy task, and uh, it wasn't working for some reason, so I went back and checked and it turns out that there's an error in the way that Serenade uses its automation IDs and um, fixing this is really not that difficult so I'll just show you how to do it right now. So first we want to select our ensemble and go to the connect tab in properties and down at the bottom here in the automation area we see that our base ID is over 2000. Um, which is kind of strange, so I just use the instrument up and that sets our base ID to zero. And then I'll compress and sort the remaining IDs. And then we'll select our instrument. And again, um, we see that our maximum ID is, uh, you know, 100 or whatever. And our maximum ID in use is over 40,000. So 
I don't really know how this even happened, but in theory there are uh, 41,000 IDs being used by this ensemble, which is just not working out because we've told it the maximum ID is 100, so um, all these other, anything with an automation ID over 100 is not going to get noticed by Ableton. So what we want to do is, once we've sorted and compressed these IDs, we find that we still have, you know, 700 some odd IDs left, we want to make sure our maximum ID um, is at least equal to the maximum ID in use. So this can be really confusing, but basically you just want to make sure that your max ID uh, number and your max ID in use number uh, kind of match up in some way. All right, so I'm just going to save this with a new name so that I can remember the difference. And then we can hop over into Ableton and I'll show you how you can modulate the gesture fader inside ADAW. All right, so we'll just open up a copy of Serenade and create a very simple sequence here for it. I'm just going to create a as basic of a two bar loop as I can essentially. And when we hit play, of course, we're not going to get any sound back because uh, we're not moving the gesture knob. So we want to find a way to automate this knob. So we're open up Serenade again and um, click on the expand function for reactor and choose the configure option. And next you can click on the gesture fader to add it to the list of automation destinations. And next let's go back into our clip and open up the envelope section at the bottom here, the little E button. And now we can draw in automation for anything that we've created as an automation destination. So we'll choose reactor and gesture. I'm just going to move it all the way to the bottom and I'm going to move it slightly up for the first bar and then all the way back down to the bottom again. And it's important that when you create these loops that the beginning point and the end point here are going to match up. Otherwise you're going to get a huge sudden jump in your bow position and it's just going to sound really ugly. Okay, so next we can hit play and hear what it sounds like. We'll probably need to make some adjustments. Definitely need to make some adjustments. So I'm just going to turn the force a little bit down here. Uh, turn the distance up a little bit. All right, before I go, I just want to mention that Serenade is built on top of a convolution engine designed by Colin Brown um, called Viva La Convolution, which is also a very amazing ensemble that has not really gotten a whole lot of notice yet. It's a convolution reverb, which is just pretty amazing for sound design capacity. Um, as this ensemble serenade proves. So check that out as well. This is Salamander Anagram with reactortutorials.com. If you like this tutorial, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out our website. And I'll be back again next week with a new reactor tutorial. Thanks for watching.